We are Red and April off-grid. We are building our own home in the Arizona desert. We are completely off the grid and are doing all of the work ourselves. We post a new video every Saturday morning, so be sure to subscribe and click the little bell so you'll get notified when our next video comes out. Well, we continue our work on the roof, putting on these layers. We actually went in for a break, I think it was lunch, and came back out and the wind had picked up and had blown some stuff over. It, it, it likes to move this foam and it, it had also ripped some of the house wrap that we'd put up on top. So we had to reattach it and get it battened down a little bit better before we could start on the next foam insulation layer. The wind is kind of our biggest enemy out here in Arizona. We can get sustained winds pretty commonly in the 20, 30, uh, 20 to 30 mile an hour range with gusts very commonly up to 50 to 60 miles an hour. So winds can be a bit of a pain here and occasionally cause some damage. That's why we kind of go out of our way to make sure things are battened down really well. You can see here now we're putting on the next layer of the foam board insulation. So this foam board is an inch and a half thick, which brings the total amount on the roof to two and a half inches. And we're putting this layer on top of that last layer of house wrap that we put on. And this will be the last layer before the strapping or the kind of board purlins that go across that the metal will attach to. We wanted to make sure these joints are staggered due to the eventual shrinkage that this board will experience. And the easiest way to do that was just to start in the opposite corner that we started with the last foam insulation layer. And that worked really good. It kind of automatically offset all the joints and just made it really easy for us to do. So I'm just helping Red get the pieces tied up against each other and then we're each putting in two screws. Red likes to work at a pretty fast pace and I'm having a hard time keeping up with him. Now on these, we couldn't find any nails long enough to attach it with the nail and big washer uh, like we were using last time. So we had to use screws with metal flat washers on this. And so I used three and a half inch long screws with metal flat washers to attach this. And we just put in the minimum that we could get away with to hold it down until we get that strapping on, which I think was about four per sheet. Here I'm moving on to the strapping for the roof. So to do this, we decided to use two by fours and I'm using long boards, either 14 foot or 12 foot length boards. Now the inch and a half thickness of the two by fours is probably a little bit of overkill for the strapping. I could probably get away with three quarter of an inch, uh, but we wanted to make sure it was really secure and this metal was really tied down to the roof well. And so we spent a little bit extra and went with the two by fours. Here I am, I've kind of pre-drilled everything and prepped everything. So I have to pre-drill and countersink because I'm going to be using a long, heavy-duty industrial screw to attach them to the purlins that are bolted directly onto the beams. Once up on the roof, I use a really long uh, 3 16 inch drill bit. It's actually like an 8 inch long that I go down through the pre-drilled holes in the board, through the foam insulation, and actually pre-drill into the purlin before I bring in that heavy duty screw because it's really big and thick and I, know, I don't want it to split the wood. So I want it to be pre-drilled all the way through. And so that's kind of the first thing I have to do is get the board in place and then get that long drill bit and pre-drill through everything. And then I can get that long six inch long structural screw and attach these straps down to the roof structure down below. And then I have a really, really good solid point to attach the actual metal to the roof with. Today is Thursday, March 3rd. Red has been working on the strapping. We got all the layers on. I'm about to go to town and get some more long screws. We are trying to get all of the strapping on before tomorrow because tomorrow is supposed to be real windy. We just found out that our metal roofing and siding order is supposed to be in Monday, so that's really exciting. You might have noticed that on this last layer of foam, we put the foil face up. And the reason we did that is because if you have an air gap between the metal and the foam, which we do in this case, then there's a benefit to keeping that foil face up. There's enough room in there that the heat that gets through the metal will hit that foil face and kind of be reflected back out. And so in this particular case, it was beneficial to do that and we should get some reflective uh, heat dissipation by putting that foil face up. I ended up putting these strapping boards on two foot centers, which worked out perfect since we'll be attaching the metal on at four foot increments. So this will work out great for that. They're really well attached and actually the position of these boards worked out great because they're actually covering the seams of the last layer of foam underneath. So that worked out really good. I also like having the 
you know, the wide side of the board down. And it's because it makes more contact with the foam and kind of spreads the weight that the strapping is bearing over a wider surface of the foam. So it worked out really good to kind of lay these down on the wide side and just take them across at two foot centers. So wherever the metal will be screwed into these strapping boards, I've actually screwed the strapping boards all the way through the, the roof to the purling with those heavy duty structural bolts. Those strapping boards that I placed only covered the foam in the middle of the roof, and I had to use a special height of board on all of the eaves. And the reason is I wanted to get that elevation to match up perfectly, and unfortunately the, the height that I needed for the eaves was an inch and three quarters, so it was a quarter inch more than the inch and a half board that's actually on top of the foam holding the foam down. So I had to rip some boards to an inch and three quarter and then put in little pieces along the short side here and then along the other two sides of the house I had to run strips of this, the width of the house. By piecing in these shorter boards I continue that strapping all the way to the edge of the house and so that gives me a surface to screw into when I'm screwing the pro panel down all the way to the edge of the house. There's quite a few of these little boards going down the sides here. I, I, I forget how many, I think it was 14 or 15 per side. And they're a little tricky to get in because I have to screw into that subframe of the eaves on the side without piercing through the wood in such a way that that screw shows from underneath. So I have to be really careful what I'm doing here. And I also have to pre-drill everything so I don't crack the wood out since I'm putting screws in close to the edge of the board. So it took a little bit of time and I had to kind of lean over the roof and kind of feel with my fingers and just make sure that I, I had it lined up correctly and that I wasn't going through, but it all worked out well in the end. I had to rip quite a few boards to length for this process since I had to make three complete trips down the length of the house, top and bottom. So my table saw got a lot of use here. It's just a kind of an inexpensive table saw that I bought a, a few years back. A, a little craftsman, nothing fancy, but it works efficiently. It does trip the breaker every once in a while and I have to kind of take it easier. It gets hot, but it served me well. Well, we finished up the roof and had a gorgeous sunset and the next morning saw me out kind of cleaning up the workspace. Whenever I get one thing done and, and move on to kind of another stage of the process, I like to kind of clean up and reorganize, put up tools and extra pieces of wood and what have you and just clean up the work site. While I was at it, I also kind of took inventory of what I had and gathered up a pile of stuff to return, both boards and other kind of small items uh, that we had bought and that we didn't need. I try to do that every month or so and not wait too long, otherwise they just kind of accumulate. So I made up a load of return stuff and then also went ahead and loaded up some trash and, and made a, a trip to the, the local landfill to, to get rid of trash. If you don't do that, you know, every so often it really piles up. April has been really busy sealing up the house. We want to make it as airtight as possible. And so lately here she's working on the sealing up the termite shield to the outer layer of the house. If we get that sealed now, then the subsequent layers will be easier to seal as well. And we, we just want it to be as kind of impenetrable as possible, keep out insects and then also keep, you know, air and heat and cool in. So I'm working on sealing up around the termite shield. And trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to do that. We bought a whole bunch of silicone, which we were considering using, but Red already had some of this silver tape. So I'm using that along the termite shield and I'm kind of tucking the foam up under the wall and then sealing it up with the tape. I think it should be a really good seal. Keep water and dirt and bugs out. And that's what I'm working on. Well, the roof is ready for the metal, but we don't have the metal yet. And so I decided to move on to another phase here, a little filler project that I could do while we're waiting for the metal to get in. And what I need to do here was actually fur out the width of the windows and doors in order to accommodate for the extra foam and the extra strapping that we decided to use on the sides. When I rough framed the windows, I, I used a piece of two by six because I wanted it to stick out past the, the wall on the exterior in order to make up distance for that foam. Originally, we were just planning on using inch and a half foam board on the sides and actually attaching the exterior metal directly to the foam board. After some research, we decided that wasn't the best idea and we decided that we would need to use strapping, which is three quarters of an inch thick, on top of the foam in order to attach the metal to. We also decided to go with a little bit thicker foam board, so all of that change added an inch and a quarter to the width of the wall. 
And since I want these window frames and door frames to come out flush with the width, width of the wall, I had to add an inch and a quarter uh, piece of furring strip all the way around every door and every window in the house. So the reason we are going with a thicker foam on the walls is because we had already purchased the two inch foam and we were planning to use it on the roof. But then we decided we wanted to stagger the joints on the roof. So we used the one and a half inch that we were going to use on the walls. We used that on the roof, and then we also purchased another layer of one inch that we could use to stagger the seams. So now we have two inches on the walls and two and a half inches on the roof. So I have been spending quite a bit of time sealing up all of the seams and joints on the OSB siding. I'm using silicone and spray foam in a few places where there's a little bit bigger gaps. And just trying to get all these seams sealed up nice and tight. And now back to Red working on the furring. I kind of started off by just ripping a whole bunch of material to that inch and a quarter thickness that I needed. I actually had some scrap pieces from an other ripping projects that I had done on the place uh, that worked out good and I was able to, to use what was left over. I just needed to cut like an eighth of an inch off. So I was able to make use of a lot of that kind of leftover material and then I, I did have to also rip some brand new boards to get the stock for this and then I just started e each window measuring and, and going with it. I used a a little clamp to kind of help me hold it in place and get it good and straight and then just screwed it in. I noticed from a distance that that leading board that the metal will be attached to, kind of the white strip you see me working on there, wasn't quite level. You know, it's amazing what the naked eye can kind of catch. And from a distance, I could just see that it wasn't quite straight. And that was driving me crazy. So I decided I needed to get up there and try to make it more level. And so I did. I got up and I, I stretched a string from one end to the other and started measuring to see you know where the movement was and there was one place that I had to jack up a little bit and then as you can see here I got my planer out and used that to take out the high spots and so it took a good bit of work I had to bring some some areas up and bring some levels down but I ended up getting it pretty close and it looked a whole lot better here I am moving on to the framing of one of the interior walls. This is something that definitely needs to be done, but there's no rush. And so I've been using it as a filler, you know, when I don't have anything else more pressing to do. So since right now I'm still waiting on the metal roofing to come in, don't really have anything else to do, I decided to, to get back to work on the interior walls. So it's a good productive thing, but it's, I don't, it doesn't really need to be done in order for the next stage of the project to progress. This particular wall is the wall to the guest bedroom and as you can see it follows the taper up and so it's it's tapered all along this width and therefore it takes a little bit more work to kind of piece this in i'm just doing it a board at a time i have to cut a, a bit of a bevel on the upper side of the board where it attaches to the top rail and so i'm just kind of taking my time and thinning it in nicely when I build interior walls, I like to put them on a 16 inch center, put the studs on a 16 inch center instead of a 24. A 24 is perfectly acceptable and you'll use less lumber, but I do my own drywall and I've found that personally, I like to have those boards closer together so that you get more places to anchor that drywall to. And to, to me, it's worth the extra few boards per wall uh, to have those you know, more options and a better way to attach that drywall. So here I'm working on sealing the outside of the house. I want to get it really good and tight. I really like things to be efficient and I really hate drafts. I'm also trying to get the house as bug tight as possible. I have used about 30 tubes of silicone for the roof and walls and several cans of spray foam around the metal beams. We bought our OSB sheeting for $21 a sheet and the price of zip sheeting was more than double that. So that's why we went with OSB. It's more work to get it sealed, but it was a lot less expensive. After finishing the guest bedroom wall, I decided to go ahead and move into the pantry since we're still waiting on the metal. And the, the first thing I need to do to get the pantry walls up was actually to grind on the concrete base in order to get ready for that seal plate so that it would sit flat. Uh, we poured this pour in several stages and so some of it stuck up a little bit and just needed a little bit of grinding to get it flat. So. I did that and then I started working on the seal plates using my treated lumber here and kind of pre-drilling some holes in that and then drilling the holes into the floor so I can bolt those seal plates down. While we were working on this wall, I actually got word that our metal was coming in and here it is showing up. We ordered this metal from Mueller Metal Buildings and it's finally arrived. So our next video, we'll be putting it on the roof. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. It really helps out our channel. 
So join us next time to see how badly damaged the metal was when it arrived and how I managed to fix it. You'll also get to see the finished look of our new roof with trim.